Today we're going to be talking about trading like the banks. What is the smart money up to? Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today, beginning of the week, Monday, uh, lots already happened in Asia with gold and a few of the major pairs starting to move. But today we're going to talk about a topic that I hope ties everything together for traders. Uh, you know, we're going to go over a trade from this morning, which just to me exemplifies understanding the, the concept of what's really going on in the Forex market. We're going to review some trades from Friday. But the one fundamental question that I want to ask, and, and I ask myself this every single day, is who is trapped in the market? Before we do that, take one second for me though and hit the like button, turn on your notifications. Thank you for a ton of great feedback. The content that I try to provide here is for people who are trading, who are serious about trading, about enhancing your performance, enhancing your results. There's no get rich quick schemes in the markets. There's tons of garbage out there on the internet, but the stuff that I'm trying to show you is the reality of what's happening in the market. And then the next step is obviously developing those skills in live time. This is trading, trading, investing, portfolio management, three different concepts. Uh, we're talking specifically today and on my site in general about trading itself, buying low, selling high. And one of the ways that we need to do that in the Forex market is to piggyback with the smart money. The smart money moves the markets. So one of the, the biggest traps and misconceptions in, in Forex is that, you know, they, they trend, you can, you know, they're easy to trade, they trend all week, they trend all month, whatever that may be. But as you know, when you're in the markets in live time, there's a lot of movement from top to bottom, bottom to top, that even when it is trending, shakes a lot of traders out of winning positions, tricks them into losing positions, and at the same time, gets traders to engage in emo emotional, impulsive, irrational activity. Uh, the smart money use a lot of tactics in live time which are designed to mess with our heads, the velocity and speed of price action to certain levels before halting, trapping traders, chasing that move, and then all of a sudden it stops and doesn't go anywhere. And before they know it, they're underwater, uh, and when it does move, it moves quickly against us very fast. And that's what we're going to talk about today. You need to start thinking like the banks. The banks are moving massive volumes of money in and out of the markets for multitudes of reasons, whether that's for, con for, for clients, whether that's just normal general day-to-day e-commerce, the amount of buying and selling of certain currency pairs that needs to occur to facilitate normal business flow, over-the-counter transactions, uh, large investor uh, portfolio trading, you know, and institutional funds, central banks, there's a multiple of players. So we're talking about massive amounts of volumes of, of a currency or an instrument move, being moved in the market. And that can apply to any instrument. There's always going to be smart money moving these markets. Now we talk about this in the 12 candle uh, rules. We talk about understanding, working from the high and the low. If you haven't seen those videos, there's 900 of them in, in the playlist. Go and look at trading tactics. I go over the 12 candle window every single day. Today though, what I want to focus on, and we're going to go through this in the charts, is understanding where volume accumulates and how we can differentiate between fast moves and consolidation phases of where the smart money is building up other side, other other participants to be able to take the other sides of their trade so they can execute their trades, the direction that they really want to go. So in order for the market, the smart money, to move hundreds of millions, billions of dollars in and out of the market, they need somebody to be able to take the other side of those contracts. And the masses provide liquidity to take the other side of the smart money trades. In order to make money trading, Somebody needs to lose. Now we all know the stats, 99 point something percent of traders lose money. Ask yourself this question, why is that? There's nothing hidden on the price chart. I know that people think, oh, they, 
algorithms make sure everybody gets stopped out and everything else, but those traders that have been following me understand that when we work from the high and the low of the day, within a certain timing window, and sometimes in the gap times, round numbers, quarter levels, we're going to look at the, just a fantastic example, Monday morning, Asia Gold, beautiful stop hunt down, stop hunt up, 50 pips in both directions, but they're fast impulsive moves once they have volume trapped in the market to take the other side. And the problem with a lot of traditional retail trading education is that they get caught using indicators and, and different types of systems that at times will work. But in a lot of cases, the smart money uses those instruments, those ideas that they know the, the bulk of retail trading in general will use to trap traders over time in the wrong direction, building up volume over multiple time frames. So again, we've talked about this in some of the previous videos, understanding when other time frame traders are trapped into the market or triggered into the market. Because once they accumulate large enough volumes into the market where they can execute large parcels of orders, those markets will move quickly and aggressively in certain directions, sometimes both, as we saw on Friday as well, where they can liquidate their positions but also accumulate positions in the other direction rapidly and then cluster volume again and then move the market again. So really important to understand, we want to think like a bank, we want to think if you had to execute a large size contract or portfolio, hundreds of millions of dollars, you couldn't just get into the market. Because obviously you, you run the risk of moving the market single-handedly, making your fills even worse and then tr attracting other multiple players, moving the market too far away, not allowing you to fully execute the trade that you wanted to in terms of your, your size. But also it attracts other eyes uh, knowing that your positions are being executed, especially on the other side of the platform. So when you're trading large enough, the institutions are aware of other large players entering in the markets at certain areas. And again, uh, large players can trade off against each other and provide liquidity for other sided traders. But the masses generally are wrong. So ask yourself this one question each and every time. Where does the masses see this market moving? Now there are going to be certain instances when the market is already in a runaway mode and then again, what I look for is when that market goes into consolidation. We want to see clusters of volume, big moves come out of consolidations. Once the train has left the station, if that's the case, I need to reset myself and let the market consolidate again. But the smart money, the banks need large clusters of volumes in the markets in order for them to execute their trade setups. If 99% of retail traders are wrong, and we need to look at how is the retail trader thinking? What is the smart money trying to do? They're very subtle. They have great ways of setting up the market to be able to, hard to tell in either way, but we're gonna look at some, some really good examples and again, understanding the timing windows, the rollover times of the new day's beginning, the golfman's pin hammers coming back to our basic setups but understanding this one fundamental premise of looking and identifying where large volumes are trapped into the market, chasing the trend, so being caught up high for a move down or being caught down low for a move up, those fast impulsive moves are the trades that I'm looking for and when the market is trapped large amounts of volume and they're going to shift it quickly, those trades are over with very fast and they're low stress and they're scalable in size. So again, coming back to that one fundamental premise that I keep reinforcing to myself and sharing with traders out there is that try and get away from the idea of chasing and scalping pips and focus on scalable trade setups. And this is what hopefully will help you identify that we're looking for who is trapped in the market. So let's take a look at the charts again. It's Monday. If you haven't done so, grab my seven step daily routine for high performance traders. A lot of traders emailing me, a lot of, uh, you know, fundamental mistakes, errors, blowing up some accounts, doing things wrong. Go back and ritualize yourself. Download this audio file. It's about creating the habits and routines, accelerating your learning, bulletproofing yourself for success. Create the mindset, but also hone your skill, develop your edge, 
develop the expertise in live time. So, you know, I really reinforce this and people who are trading and they're serious about trading know that it's all great in theory and there's lots of great systems that work, but when you're trading it in live time, there's a lot of things that can happen. Uh, traders lose the focus in live time. They, they average into losers. They break all their rules. They do everything wrong that they say they're not going to do. But through ritualizing your routines, you know, self-talk, uh, visualization, honing your skill, going over your trade setups, understanding every aspect of them, working backwards, deconstructing a successful trade, knowing how you're going to execute in live time, then, then doing that through specific practice and then getting better and better at each and every trade. So let's take a look at the charts. Have a great week. Keep it simple. Focus on winning the day, winning one trade, one good trade at a time, and do it again in the next trade. Let's take a look. Have a great week and may the markets go with you. We're looking at, uh, again, the concept, understanding the concept of thinking like the smart money, trading like the smart money, understanding that in order for them to move large volumes of uh, money through the markets, they need other traders to be on the opposite sides of those contracts. And in order for somebody to make money, somebody needs to lose money. Now, Obviously, every week, every day is going to be different, but the one fundamental thing that traders need to start identifying with is volume of clusters of volumes that are trapped in the market. Now, gold is just, you know, it, some days it's just so obvious. We can look at a, at a 50 pip or a 25 pip box. Now, there's a couple of questions to ask that I ask myself each and every day is when the market opens up, in the rollover time, where is the opening price? And the opening price in this particular day, you can pick any day you want. We're at uh, 75. You know, and I'm talking about the closest middle average median price in my 50 pip box. Again, reinforcing round numbers, double zeros and 50s are my major areas. But looking at the clustered volume and saying to myself, where is the market clustering volume around? And it's clearly working back and forth around 75. Then we come back to our, you know, understanding the, the main objective of the market. And that is to obviously trap traders on the wrong side. And so we come back to our, our model of the market going into consolidation and hitting the stops, hitting the stops, and then trending the market. Now, again, there are going to be different variations of this, but... This consolidation is where we are looking for, again, trap volume. Where is the volume trapped? Where is the median price? And where would we see an indication of a trade entry? So again, we come back to our, our, our fundamental high-low engulfments, pin hammers at these consolidations at round numbers. And again, understanding that when the market has done its work, and it's locked in a level that it will be going back to the other side. And the reason for this is obviously because there's somebody in the money and they're going to go back and get that trader. So these consolidations are what gives us our first insight that the market is preparing to move again. They're clustering volume. They're blocking up volume. And again, understanding that these large volumes heading into the next session could be the beginning. If, if it's clustered, we could get a fast, impulsive move in the direction of that stop hunt. So we see the market move up 50 pips. They hit stops on the, the lower highs from the consolidation. They work up in three pushes. They get the engulfment and the bear pin hammer off the quarter level. We also have traders who are in profit down here. That's a 50 pip range in terms of number to number that this market could potentially be moving. Now it may move in two impulsive pushes. Again, we talked about one push, two push, three pushes down, but then understanding also the market going into a coiled consolidation, we could get a measured move down, a continuation of this impulsive move down, but instead we get a reversal at the numbers a pin hammer, a bear pin hammer for the fast move back up. Consolidation, stop hunt down, consolidation, stop hunt up. The smart money 
need to trap volume. Now again, I talk about quarter levels typically will be the area where volume will get trapped. So uh, we can have a quarter level above double zeros as we saw in the US session, trapping traders below 25, jamming them in to the low of the day at this stage on the uh, London low, taking out swing lows from the gap time heading into the open, but jamming them into double zeros and then we get our engulfment and then a small inside bar. We'll zoom in here. A small inside bar and then the fast impulsive 75 pip move back up towards the high. So we head into the next day and again the same premise. We're inside of 50 and 25. So we've got heading into Asia each day. We have, you know, a good four, six, maybe, maybe longer hours potentially to identify a consolidation. Not every day. It's not going to be the same every single day. But understanding then, we I always ask, where's my 50 pip box? So we're we've got a high above 25. Okay, we've got stops that are 20, we've got a 50 pip box between 75 and 25. Obviously, we have highs and lows, but our volume is clustered in the lower half of this 25 pip box. So we've got a 50 pip high low range. We've got numbers were clustered around 50. 50 is our median price. We get an engulfment. Again, I'll zoom in here at the end of the Asian 12 candle window. An engulfment at the median price for the 25 pip plus stop hunt to the high of the day. We get, then in the gap time get the stop hunt down and then the stop hunt back up. And then the engulfment and the creeping trend, which is a version of a consolidation creeping trend down, we talk about creeping trends will end in one of two ways. They will blow off in the direction of the trend and then again we have an hour of clustered volume heading into the US 12 candle wind. And just working from the high and the low of the day, we see a variation of hitting the stops, hitting the stops, and then going back to the other side and hitting the stops. So again, the, the perspective that I'm trading from each and every day is where is the potential to take size in the market? When are they moving size? So instead of trying to scalp and get in and out and try to get 20 here and 10 here and, and all, I'm looking, when are they locking this in? And when are they going to move a large parcel of money through the market? And so again, we head into the next session. We've got a block of volume and again, price opens up the very first bar and moves above 75. And again, pay attention that the bulk of this first few hours in the last few hours of the US is above 75. And again, if I move my bar up, you can see now the midline 75 between 50 and zero, the larger parcel of this volume is caught above 75. Now again, I'm, I'm just demonstrating this on the 15 minute chart on gold. I will use a one minute chart to enter and exit these markets. But just demonstrating again, you can see clearly, just even if we go back to our original premise, we put a horizontal consolidation in the market pins down to the low, goes back up to the high underneath double zeros, which was a one minute entry somewhere in around 90. But the market closes, a bear pin hammer closing below 75, which is our midline price. So again, an engulfment closing below midline for the stop hunt down. Market goes into consolidation in three pushes before engulfing and reversing. And they go back up to get traders at break even. They don't quite go to the high, but again, we get a stop hunt. The market goes into consolidation. We get a stop hunt at the high bar. They make a high. They come down and stop hunt the low of the um, first hour, pinning down. So again, we get one push down, two pushes down, enticing traders short, and a third push down before a vertical move, which again hits stops not only for the high of the Europe London window, but the high of the day in the Asian window. At this stage, they had not been hit. This vertical move takes traders outside of the 100 pip box. We get a bear pin reversal candle at double zeros. Again, understanding a breakout bar. This is a stop hunt, a vertical move through the high of the day and reversing at round numbers. 
a market that breaks out will typically have a straddle bar and straddle through and pushes throughout and breaks out and pulls back. This market hits the stops and pulls back to double zeros and fades down through the whole day hitting stops. Again, hitting stops. We'll just move this bar up to the high of the day. We hit the stops. We hit the stops, pull it back into consolidation, heading into the US 12 candle window. We have an engulfment and a bullpen hammer at the low. The market consolidates at 50, jamming traders in underneath the 50. So we have a quarter of trap volume. So the question you ask yourself when the consolidation happens is where is volume trapped? Are they trapped up high? Are they trapped down low? They've hit the stops at the low of the day, pulled back and gone into consolidation on top of the low of the day. Traders on a shorter time frame were long at 50 or just slightly better than 50. There was a little W formation, a 25 pip move, a 25 pip stop went down, a consolidation and a W formation off the 50 pip area. On the 15 minute chart, we have an engulfment of the low bull doji. We have another engulfment closing above the midline at the end of that second hour and again a 50 pip move through the high of the day. Heading into the end of the weekend the market pulls back, resumes the upward move before failing and then retesting it a second time inside of the peak formation before engulfing giving us a potential M structure. Heading into the new week the market opens up just out uh, underneath of 25, so again we're between 0 and 50. But as the morning unfolds, we see this cluster of volume. We've got volume caught above 25, which is our midline. We've also got breakout traders in the market. So if we look at this breakout bar, we'll just zoom in again. So you've got to understand who's caught, who's in the market. The, the trend using indicators is up. This bull candle right here, the break of that bar, breakout traders are in the market. They've got stops potentially below this bull candle, below the bear candle. We've also got traders in the market from the equities hour long on the engulfment of the bull doji as well as the bullpen hammer. The market has a cluster of volume trapped above double zeros. Who has the most to lose? It's Monday. It's the beginning of the week. Are they going to put a peak formation high in, a peak formation low? The market comes down and again we'll zoom in. False move session beginning. They get traders going long right off the bat. We're inside of the numbers. Our consolidation is inside of the numbers. We have a high at uh, just above 75, but we've got a low above zero. We get an inside bar and a 40 pip stop hunt down, then a bullpen hammer after stops have been hit for a 50 pip move back up. The market is now pulled back into consolidation. Now at this stage, we're heading in the gap time. We have a high and a low in place. We have stops hit up top and below. The market's inside, so we are now on our way back down but this market could easily pull back before getting to the low or it will hit stops down low or pull back into consolidation between 0 and 75 we have a low of the day currently in place but the more volume we get clustered the more volume smart money can cluster the more the masses can liquidate the positions they want to get out of so have a think about that so if we look at the pound on Friday, again, right off the bat, the opening price, the market moved into the open of the session, went into consolidation. So again, our median price is right at, in the consolidation, is at 50. The market proceeds to put in a new high before pulling back, and then in the gap time, extends that new high out before giving us an engulfment into the open of that first hour for a stop on straight down hitting all the lower fruit hanging lower fruit the higher lows the stops inside but again opening price expanding the range consolidating 
expanding the range, so indicators getting traders chasing this move long, the engulfment and the stop hunt down, stop hunt back up, expanding the range again, pulling it back in the gap time, hitting the highs one more time before stop hunting down, clustering volume and hitting stops. Traders are following this trend up. They follow the move up and then they hit the stops. We get an engulfment and a bullpen hammer in that first hour of London and they go back up and they hit the stops on traders that are short from the high of the day. They go into consolidation into the close of the session. We have volume now trapped above 75 and again the question I ask myself is who uh, could suffer the most pain here. Now we have a stop at the low of the day. We have lower highs in the Asian session. We could see the market hit the stops up top before going down or hitting the low inside of the peak formation from Friday before resuming that up leg hitting all the lower highs. Currently we have a cluster of volume though caught currently caught above 75. So again, when the day opened, our median price, we're inside of 0 and 75, but from Friday's range, working up, working up, working up, we have volume clustered. I'll just draw this in. Volume clustered above 75. If they go 25 pips into these guys, this will obviously hit stops, or if they go further, really hit stops and um, put losses into these positions, or they protect this low and they hit all the higher lows. Creeping trends will resolve themselves in one of two ways. They'll blow off in the direction of the move, or we'll have a squeeze for a fast, impulsive move up, making new highs. But again, currently we have a cluster of volume, and then we watch how price behaves. Hopefully you got value from today's video. Traders, look for these clusters of volume. That's where the market has the largest potential to trap as many people as possible on the wrong side. And the only way you make money trading is by somebody else losing. Have a great trading session, stay disciplined, and may the Hi markets traders, go with it's you. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The Seven Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.